Hi, I'm Jay Maxkiss and welcome to TLDR, a channel where I talk about MTG lore but in a much more condensed version. You may wonder while listening why I haven't included character X in the story or character Y and where the heck is character Z? The reason being is there is a crap ton of material out there, especially when it is concerning the earlier lore that predates the Gatewatch. So my job is to cut out all that fluff and put it into an easy to listen video that gives you the gist of it. Without further ado, let us dive into one of the more requested places to start, and that is from the very beginning. Now, the beginning is more easily told when you're talking about the first relevant character in the story, and that is the Forever Serpent, the Horned One, the God Emperor, or God Pharaoh, the Big Belbaski of Magic himself, Nicol Bolas, or as I like to call him, Nicky B. Now, Nicol Bolas took part in what is called the Dragon War, where a whole bunch of dragons fought each other and only five elder dragons emerged victorious. Nikki B being one of those five. The other four being names you probably won't remember because they're not said in the rest of the story, but they're basically his brother and sisters and uh, cousins thrown in there, but maybe there'll be a video about it in the future. For now, Nikki B. So he emerged victorious out of this and any other elder dragon that didn't make it out was either killed or maimed and they were stripped from their wings and their powers and basically turned into worms. So Nicol Bolas, while he was in this dragon war, had his spark ignited during some time and became one of the first ever recorded planeswalkers. And what did he do after becoming a planeswalker? Well, he partook in a planeswalker duel against a demonic leviathan. Now Wizards of the Coast have made spirit demons Dragon demons, even freaking mole demons, but no demonic leviathans, unfortunately. But here's to hoping they will. So just use your imagination. Put on a leviathan together with the demon, you got Nicol Bolas' opponent. Well, battle lasts a month long, and Bolas finally wins by touching him. Yep, that's all he had to do was touch him, because Nicol Bolas has this ability called mind shattering touch and by its name you can imagine what it does so nicobolus kills the leviathan and feasts on his body for over a year gaining its power this all takes place in madara on dominaria which has way too much history to even get into since it is the nexus of the multiverse so here is a map here's madara and after this bolus nikki b decided he wanted to be god emperor so he does that by taking out the head honcho of the time of madara Nicobolus then creates the Imperial Shrine where he could leave his body and go to a place called the Meditation Realm. Now Nicobolus reigned supreme until a dude named Tetsuo Umazawa decided enough is enough. And he wants to end the reign of Nicol Nicobolus. He kills Bolus' right hand man which pisses the Elder Dragon off enough and he goes after Tetsuo. Now Tetsuo casts a spell called the Meteor Hammer Spell which crashes into the Imperial Shrine where Bolus had his body as he chased Tetsuo into the meditation realm. Now once there, and his body destroyed, Tetsuo finishes off the Elder Dragon no problem. Yes, Nicol Bolas is dead. Or that's what they want you to think. So a small fragment of him managed to remain in a rift by the coast connected to the meditation realm. Now we fast forward in time, past a whole bunch of history, Urza this, Brothers War that, Yawgmoth this, Phyrexians this, and we end up in a place with a whole bunch of rifts covering Dominaria, which will pretty much destroy the multiverse if it's not dealt with. So, enter stage right, Tefiri and Gain, including Vincer. Now Tefiri, a time mage planeswalker, sees the problem of the rifts and wants to shut them down with Vincer, Into, who wasn't yet a planeswalker. While dealing with the rifts, the group becomes separated from Tefiri and the remnant of Bolas left over uses Venser's latent planeswalker spark somehow and poof, is reborn. So Tefiri rejoins his group and challenges Bolas who bests Tefiri no problem using his touch and even rips Tefiri's body apart. An arm here, half a torso there, a head here, and then leaves. Tefiri's group put his body back together again unlike poor old Humpty Dumpty where the king's men couldn't do jack and Bolas returns later. Bolas saw that the Madara rift as a problem and decided to close it but closing rifts was pretty difficult so instead of sacrificing something of himself he used the life of a planeswalker named Leshrac. So Leshrac is sacrificed, Bolas closes the rift and then Bolas pisses off thinking Dominaria was lost and Tefiri wouldn't succeed in closing the rest of these rifts saying he devised a plan where he could preserve himself if they failed. 
they didn't, and this caused the mending, which reconfigured all the Planeswalker Sparks, making them significantly weaker. So before this mending happened, he actually went and planeswalked to Amonkhet and easily overthrew the gods there, destroying every single living adult and rewrote the history of Amonkhet. He started up a plan where the youth would be trained and partake in trials and the strongest would be taken to an afterlife of sorts. And he remade some of the gods, he had the mummies take care of the children, had four of the gods' memories rewritten to serve him, and had one of the gods named Bantu watch over and maintain everything while he was gone. Then the mending happened, and then he was weaker. At some point after the mending, he ended up meeting up with Liliana and helped orchestrate this demon pact that could get her more power. And all that Bolas asked of her was an IOU in the future, and we still have yet to see what that IOU is. So after this, Bolas went off to Alara, because somehow this old son of a gun knew about Alara being one plane before, and not a bunch of shards, which it was at this time. He went there to manipulate and cause planar war between the shards and prepare for the conflux. And the conflux is when all the shards become one plane again. So this is where he enlisted the services of Tezzeret, and Tezzeret ended up wanting to backstab Bolas, and he used Jace Bellerun as his backup plan to protect his mind from Bolas. So when Bolas confronted these two, he had no problem with Jace, and no problem with Tezzeret, and they ended up fleeing Bolas. Now Jace ended up seeing that he was being used, and wanted to fight back, and pretty much obliterated Tezzeret's mind in the end. Now, Bolas didn't get much from this, except he still had Tezzeret's broken body and mind for his own, which he could be remade into being a loyal servant. So with war erupting in Alara, the obelisks of mana were awakened, causing a maelstrom to grow and conflux to happen. So Bolas went and harvested a lot of this maelstrom essence, gaining a lot more power compared to how he was from his former self, we have no idea but he did absorb a lot of this essence. Now, a very pissed off kitty cat named Johnny came for vengeance of his brother's death, and using some of the power from the maelstrom, Johnny summoned the essence of Bolas' soul to fight for him. And they did battle, and they ended up clashing, and they both bit each other, and then boom, both disappeared. So after Alara, Nicol Bolas went to confront Ugin, the spirit dragon planeswalker. He found out where he was thanks to someone named Yasava Dragonclaw, and that's all you need to know about her. So Nicol Bolas easily dispatched of Ugin by sending his own dragons against him and got the information that he wanted out of him. Now, things get a little crazy here as Sarkon Vol actually goes back in time to save Ugin, and so Ugin isn't actually dead. But this isn't about Ugin, so we'll carry on. So Nicol Bolas ends up traveling to Zendikar, and through some manipulation of Sarkon, Chandra and Jace, he's able to release the Aldrazi there, but we do not know why he does so. So then Bolas sends Tezzeret to Kaladesh because he wants an invention known as the Planar Bridge, which can transport non organic materials from plane to plane. Now finally comes the Hour of Devastation, where Bolas goes to Amonkhet once again to claim his eternalized army of warriors. Now once he gets there, he defeats most of the gods using his rendition of his three made remade gods and basically makes everyone run for their lives into the harsh desert. Lastly, he confronts the Gatewatch. Jace, he tries to peer into Bolas' mind and gets hit hard, making him scream in agony and planeswalking the heck out of there. He tells Liliana he can help her unlock the powers of the Chains Veil with no consequence and she takes off as well. Chandra gets her ribs crushed, Sheep goes away, Nissa retreats, and Gideon, who has been hit like a tetherball again and again by Bolas' tail, pisses off last. So after Amonkhet, we have pretty much caught up to date with Ixalan. So Bolas acquires the service of Raska to go get an object called the Immortal Sun, which prevents planeswalking, and he promises to make her guild leader in return on Ravnica. The Immortal Sun is an object created by a sphinx named Azor. So the object cost Azor his spark, and was a plan put in motion between himself and Ugin to trap Bolas on Ixalan. But remember when Bolas killed Ugin? He pretty much learned everything from Ugin about anything he had plot or seen or 
anything. And so the poor flying cat on Azor was left licking his paws in Ixland for a long ass time. So Vraska ends up getting the Mortal Sun and the planar bridge is used by Tezzeret to transport it out of there. There you have it folks. Bolus history in a nutshell. I hope you learned something today and please comment on what you would like to see in the future. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more TLDR.